guys, it's Mani Dodi here and welcome back to my channel. So if you're here, you're either clicking on this for the first time ever or you are watching this in continuation of the first video that I did on this series about my pregnancy and all the good things that are pregnancy related, at least in my story. So either way, welcome on board. Uh, whether you are a fellow subscriber from a while ago or this is your first time seeing my channel, I hope that you enjoy the video coming up. And if you do, please make sure to subscribe down below by hitting the red button and turning it from red to white and you'll be updated as to every single time that I upload a new video but of course only if you ding the little notification bell now of course this is a series that I started because of my pregnancy life as I said in the previous video I highly suggest you go watch it because it is about me finding out and stuff like that but I want to disclaim that everybody's life is different everybody's life circumstances decisions and even just the pregnancy journey in general um, is very different for every single individual so I just wanted to disclaim that I'll never take my word as bible or anybody's word for bible uh, whether you are pregnant or already have your kids and everything i just want to say that this is just my experience and i just want to share it with you guys and as i did say in that video as well a lot of folks apparently do watch these videos and get a lot of information out of it because not only does the hospital not tell you certain things but the doctors also don't tell you certain things during your pregnancy so i just thought i'd share my story and in this particular video we will just get to it right now it is all about my first trimester so just like last time if i do look down is because I have some notes here that I don't want to forget about my first trimester notes and everything but the first thing that I have here is my doctor's notes and recommendation first trimester obviously weeks 1 through 12 apparently it's the most vulnerable trimester that you may have as a pregnant woman you can have a lot of complications and a lot of miscarriages actually like I don't remember the, t the statistic but majority of miscarriages do happen during the first trimester the tips that the doctors were recommending me and a lot of my pregnant friends who did happen to know because I didn't tell them any people that the topic for a little bit later in the video a lot of folks were telling me to not exercise super drastically if anything i could just take it easy on walking just because you want to make sure that the little one is attached properly onto your belly and then nothing else happens actually because of that i had actually gone to several folks to ask them for their opinion and their professional uh, discretion <laughs> depending on who they were but i asked them several times what i can do what i couldn't do whether it's foods exercise uh, regular day-to-day -day activities even if it's just like simple lifting like not heavy stuff or anything but should i stay away from that regardless etc sleeping positions all that good stuff i also happened to go to the hospital i want to say around my nine week mark because i happened to just shed a lot of blood but obviously as a first time pregnant person and in general i wasn't supposed to be getting my period right so i wasn't sure what was going on so to give you a little backstory i happened to be laying in bed and because it's really hot in our house even in the winter at least for me because i'm a very hot bodied person and she's a hot body in general period <laughs> i happen to be really hot at night and so i just sleep naked except for socks don't come at me for that but i happened to sleep naked and i was just lying in bed face up and then i suddenly felt like something like Psh. Right? So I was like, oh, that's weird. Sometimes that happens as a woman, you would know. Sometimes we discharge more than other times. Sometimes we, lol, just pee because everything down there is a little out of control sometimes when it comes to <laughs> like whether sneezing, coughing, whatever, it's a lot of pressure down there. But I was just like, oh, this feels kind of heavy. This, this feels kind of like, like a lot came out. So then I scoot up, I scoot to the side and then I noticed that it's actually blood. It's not clear, so it's not discharge or anything. It's not like it's pee or anything. It was actual blood. So I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So then I went to the bathroom, I cleaned up and everything. And then I remember this was a Saturday and then I told Moses about it, my husband. And he was kind of in shock. He didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say or think. And I don't know, things were just going through my head. Like I wasn't sure what best course of action to take. But anyways, I cleaned up, just went about my day. But then later Sunday afternoon, I kind of figured, I was like, you know what? Realistically, we should be like, I should check what's going on. I actually went to work in the morning and I was like, you know what? Something's just, I don't know. Something's calling me to go to the hospital. Let's just go to the hospital. So anyways, we went to the hospital and essentially they just concluded that perhaps, and this happens in some cases where whichever side that the baby implanted on, the other side sheds. So I happened to see a lot of shedding. They did check that the uh, through ultrasound and tests and everything and heartbeat that the baby was still there. Indeed it was. So yay. But yeah, everything kind of just went back to normal after that. I asked them if I'm not supposed to do anything in particular again, eating, certain 
certain things exercising walking lifting even light things or whatever they said just keep on doing what the doctors and the ob have told you nothing is to be changed right now but if it does happen again obviously just come back to the hospital let us know because obviously this shouldn't be happening more than once so that was basically the only scare that we had where it's like oh what happened here like what is this about but besides that no everything's fine maybe still fine obviously like i'm filming this quite a while later after that fun fact for you guys time of filming this video i am 30 weeks and one day it's been quite a while and obviously as i said in the previous video i am posting these videos after i probably give birth once i'm ready to announce to the world and everything but i am still currently pregnant and i just want to kind of get this out of the way because i feel like it'll be harder to do so once life changes completely by having the baby so yeah i'm filming this during my 30 week mark ish so i'm officially for sure in my third trimester it has not happened again so there's nothing that i need to watch out for necessarily next thing that i wanted to talk about are symptoms aversions and cravings want to tell y'all and i'll talk about this also in my second trimester video and my third trimester video want to tell y'all i've had the most boring pregnancy <laughs> when it comes to aversions stories i really didn't start showing belly until my second trimester and i feel like that's just because i've always been a very chunky person and so people might just think that i'm just blown or whatever but in my first trimester for sure i was not showing whatsoever i was informed to you know if i wanted to sleep on my stomach i could but obviously after some certain period of time and certain growth i wouldn't be able to so if i'm a stomach sleeper to take advantage of that in my first trimester i was informed basically not to eat anything out of the ordinary that i wouldn't be eating anyways but for sure no raw fish such as sushi no soft cheeses no raw meat in general so i wasn't doing that or anything but in terms of, of aversion symptoms and cravings i didn't have any cravings whatsoever i don't think my cravings kicked in cravings if you want to call them that and if you want to find out why they're in quotations you'll find out in the second trimester video but i didn't really have that many cravings not that i can come up with or anything and symptoms still no symptoms like i said very boring pregnancy i didn't even have a single episode of morning sickness which is a blessing from the heavens because my friend recently found out that she was pregnant and on like the fifth week she was having like a lot of nausea and discomfort so thankfully i didn't have any of that sorry if the angle changed i had to quickly change my battery but as i was saying no really symptoms aversions or cravings for that matter um, in terms of symptoms the only thing that i noticed is that i just happen to be hungry or more often i was still trying to watch as you guys know not that i'm on a, on a weight loss journey but i've been trying to lose weight for a while but in general my focus right now is just eating more holistically and just in general feeling good on the inside regardless of what my outside looks like that has been my message for a long time my goals right now obviously were not to necessarily lose weight because obviously I have something growing inside me but i still wasn't gonna let myself go and just be like okay well i'm pregnant i'm just gonna eat 20 pounds extra a day because it's for the child no so i just kind of felt like i was hungrier more often but i still was watching how much i ate i wasn't portion controlling or anything i was making sure that i wasn't doing the absolute most out of my typical routine to get into the habit of eating way too much for aversions interestingly enough i up to this day still do not have any aversions nothing makes me ick nothing smells really strong or like super bad to me nothing tastes really awful to me i always remember my mom when i talk about aversions with people because my mom instantly knew that she was pregnant with my brother and myself immediately basically when she was repulsed by the smell of coffee and because my mom is basically a coffee addict like a lot of people but my mom really loves her coffee and she was repulsed by it aversions are obviously a biological fact that happens because certain things that are not good for the baby or for mom during pregnancy for the baby should not be eaten and so the body reacts in a way that you shouldn't be eating these things by making you throw up by making you nauseous at certain smells such as like if you were to eat sushi maybe to you non-pregnant it tasted perfectly fine but obviously your body may react as repulsion towards the food aversion towards the food or even just the sight or the smell of the food because it's just not good for the baby evolutionarily that's just how it works so my mom instantly knew that she was pregnant with my brother and i when she was repulsed by the smell and this like basically the taste of coffee for me i haven't had anything i literally eat the same stuff that i was eating pre-pregnancy <laughs> and it's just boring you know what i'm saying like i can't say that i've had a, like a really fun pregnancy when it comes to like ooh, i love this stuff all of a sudden like i love kfc or like oh i hate subway sandwiches specifically like the lettuce that they put in there yuck like i don't have any of that to share which makes it for a very boring pregnancy story but it is a very blessed to be calm 
and tranquil story. I haven't gone through anything that's hard and so I'm very blessed and fortunate for that. Symptoms, like I said, I haven't had anything. Like I said, I was just like, I just felt more hungry, but it's not like even that I was necessarily eating more. And um, no aversions and no cravings. So that's that. <laughs> in general, for my pregnancy, especially the first two trimesters, because I still have like 10 weeks to go in theory, we'll see how much that changes in my third trimester, which I'll probably have to film after the baby's here, just because it finalizes everything. But when it comes to like cravings and all those like fun stories that people like to share, dog, there's nothing to see here. That I'm like the most plain Jane book when it comes to that. And then the last thing that I want to talk about for the first trimester is actually telling my friends and family. So some people don't tell anybody whatsoever until like basically they start showing the recommendation is that you don't tell anybody until you're past your first trimester because obviously as i said before first trimester is the most common where miscarriages happen and so you never want to announce things too early because then if it turns out to go sideways then then you have to tell everybody who you told that you're no longer having the baby although i feel like that's something that people should change because a pregnancy could also be lost by the eight month mark a baby could be born still stillbirth is that what it's called a lot of things could happen past the third tri past the first trimester sorry where you lose a baby and so why would it make a difference but anyways this is the recommendation that people share anyways i told only two people in my first trimester and that's because one one of them is my supervisor shout out to emmy you guys know her uh, from other videos of mine she's my supervisor at my part-time job and so i kind of needed her to know ahead of time because in this particular part-time job we do a lot of heavy lifting and because of my body mass people often count on one or two people me being one of them to do all their heavy lifting shoving around and huffing and puffing and stuff so i had to tell her that like listen not that everybody else has to know but i just need you to be aware that i need to be on tasks that are not that demanding of me physically because i can't do that i cannot do that <laughs> i like cannot by doctor's orders i cannot do that and um the other person that i told is my friend andrea who has been a wonderful source of information but at the beginning at the beginning i wanted to keep it to the very minimal people that i needed to tell which was only two of them i specifically spoke to her because she had been pregnant on herbalife products and so because i'm on herbalife products and i just kind of wanted to have her share her story not that herbalife obviously herbalife is not made to it's a nutritional product it's not made to make your nutrition worse but some people have their 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 thoughts about like supplements and supplemental nutrition when it comes to being pregnant and everything for those of you who don't know i am a herbalife distributor so i kind of know these things anyways but because i'm pregnant for the first time and i was on herbalife products i just kind of wanted to know her experience herbalife products are not medicated at least not the nutritional meal replacement and all that good stuff from what i'm aware of i don't think any of our products are medicated but i'm not aware of all the products that we have especially in different countries and everything i'm just aware of the ones that we have here in canada but i just wanted to get her opinion and she said that she told me like different things that she did including continuing her nutrition stuff with herbalife and then she told me basically the same thing like oh try not to do a lot of exercise unless you already kind of do walks and stuff do very mild things and please just don't lift unless you get cleared to do so by the doctor in terms of telling my friends and family i mean i definitely wanted to keep it until like after because i just didn't want to announce it to people i even to this day i haven't announced it on social media i have told more people obviously because i also need like advice i also need to see like if people who have had children in the recent years if they still have the clothing for that particular sex of the baby that i'm having that's been that but in terms of telling my family so around christmas time is when i told my family and i wanted it to announce it because of christmas i wanted to announce it in like a little ornament for my mom that said mom established 1994 which is when my brother was born and then grandma established 2023 so i wanted to announce that like that a whole story happened where my mom lol i guess got too excited and forgot the instructions because she was also flying abroad to florida to visit my family and so whatever she opened the gift a little early she got the little ornament so then they called me they sent me pictures like oh my god or whatever i just wanted to leave it at that because then the rest of my family was going to find out later with my mom going to florida and giving my grandma who lives with a whole bunch of my family members um, her gift that also announced that i was you know pregnant and so my grandma was going to be a great grandmother all that good stuff unfortunately i guess this happens with like a lot of moms or like female family members in general if they get too excited especially the old school ones they don't really think of asking if it's okay for them to tell <laughs> other family members if they can share the news so then i happen to get a whole bunch of texts the next day from my aunts my uncles and some of my cousins saying like oh my god you're pregnant i'm just like oh my god how did you know 
this has my mom involved in it. If you're watching this and your family is very not nosy, but they don't seem to hold their tongue with certain things, I would definitely make it obvious that if you're announcing it to them, it just might be them only. Or if you're totally cool with them doing the news for you to other people, you can do that also. But whatever's comfortable for you, because obviously what you and your partner decide to keep secret, it should be respected. Some family members, even if you do tell them not to say anything, some family members do go ahead and just rat you out anyways. They think that that's their news too but luckily it was just my mom that happened to get just so much in the emotion of the fact that she was becoming my grandmother and everything that she happens to say it to just like a small group of family members but if you do have certain family members that would rat you out anyways or share your news before you're ready or whatever then maybe it's better for you not to tell them just because every single person is different every relationship bond is different so whoop de do <laughs> but besides that yeah i only told my family in my first trimester and then later in second trimester i did tell other people because there obviously had to be like other things to be planned and everything i believe that's everything that i have for my first trimester so stay tuned for the second trimester video where i talk about a whole bunch of other things including the ones that i spoke about today but within the second trimester since everybody's symptoms aversions even like their experiences their body changes and stuff like that all kind of vary from person to person trimester to trimester so stay tuned for that if you are looking forward to that video and you haven't done so already please make sure to subscribe to the channel the button's just down there please make sure to hit it and turn it from red to white and you'll be updated as to every single time that i upload a new video and of course think to the little notification bell that way you're updated as to every single time that i upload a new video if you are here for the first time thank you so much for the view thank you so much for watching i hope that you guys really enjoy the content and if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything please feel free to leave them down below i'm always down to answer and have conversations downstairs in the comment section and also so if you're joining because of the series, I definitely do hope that you are enjoying it. If you have any recommendations for future topics to talk about after baby's here, maybe the first couple weeks or first couple months of postpartum, definitely let me know as well. But if you're, yeah, if you're just enjoying the series overall or the channel overall, I appreciate it. I appreciate the support that you may give me, whether it's a like, a share, or a comment. And I'm looking forward to filming the next one. So for now, that's pretty much it, guys. So thank you so much once again for your support. I love you guys. I hope you guys stay safe and enjoy the weather and the day and all the good stuff of life, wherever you may be. And until next time, guys, keep up the awesome, never change. And I'll see you guys next time. Yo, lo a todos en Maritoria. Out.